Okay, I'm gonna talk about the right way to supply and protect your wires in a truck camper. Uh, all right, basically every time you run uh, electricity over wire, particularly in a mobile solution where things are getting abraded and jiggled and you can degrade the insulation and it's in immediate contact with metal, you can get shorts. And the shorts will flow electricity into the ground uh, which is what your chassis is used for and this is all hooked together and you'll have an over amperage and you can melt the wires and I didn't actually believe it was all that dangerous until one day I was running my trolling motor and the motor got switched to the on position um, as I was up against the shore the propeller couldn't move because it was against a bush and within 30 seconds that motor trying to pull through regular trolling motor wire, which is about like that, heated it all up, the wires caught fire, the insulation caught fire, and the terminals on the battery, the lead terminals melted and were dripping into my boat. All of that in about eh, 30 seconds to a minute. So you do need to fuse and protect it. So here's what I've got. A single fuse block. This happens to be from D, uh, Blue Sea, which I think is great. And you run power and feed power into there there's the positive and there's the negative and all that comes down to this one single power cord and i'm on a 10 awg wire which is enough to flow 30 amps power stations if they're a decent one will come with a 30 amp 12 volt socket if it doesn't have that you don't want it for a truck camper you want to be able to do one single feed plug in one plug and feed the entire system so you don't have to be plugging in and out and messing around. I can unplug this one thing, grab this and take it inside. And then all of the wires in the camper are permanently run to that. Okay. Now what I've got on there right now is here coming out on a 15 amp fuse on the appropriate wiring the uh, wire for a diesel heater okay that diesel heater needs to run a 10 amp for startup and then it only takes about one amp 12 volt okay 110 watts or so uh, and then down to about 10 to 60 watts on running depending on the fan speed i've also got another thing here which i made um, and i believe that is 14 awg to this device right here and all that is is something for up in the bed that I can mount on the rail and it has a 12 volt cigar lighter there for my 12 volt DC blanket that I can plug in up there and then I also have this nice dual USB and uh, it's got a little voltage reading right there so I can plug in phones and charge phones laptops well phones at least and iPads and uh, run them up in the bed area okay so I've got that down here right now but that works good so right now I've only got those two I'll take the two things tune supplied the fan and the lights and wire them in there but I didn't want to cut their connections that they supplied until I looked at them and saw if they worked now let's talk about what sort of connections you should be using there's only two connections that you should really be using for high amperage DC a good you know the, the main one this is an Anderson power pole and that's good that'll go up to 30 amps or above depending on which ones you get and that's at least a 30 amp one some power stations come with this that's a good solid hookup my power station didn't happen to have that it come with something called an XT60 all right and you can get all these on Amazon and I like the XT60 it's nice and compact and you plug it in it's got a solid lockup so there you go i plug in one single thing and it goes to my fuse box and each wire is fused so that uh, the fuse will blow before the wire melts uh, depending on what the draw is all right okay i'm inside my tune m1 on a tacoma six foot bed third generation and i'm going to just show uh, where the electrical goes i couldn't get this information from people very difficult not on the website so here's the uh, max air i think this is the 6400 uh fan and uh, just a demo of that you pull down you turn it this way and it lifts up the back opens it up from being rain sealed you stop you can shove that back up in there 
And then here it's just got uh, Oh, speed switches you can reverse the fan and turn it on and off and you can actually hold the temperature but uh, I probably won't use it that way all right and um, I'll just leave that up for now the wire for this comes down goes down this channel here underneath and tune is cleaned up and and put this plastic on uh, the channel here so that uses that uh, channel in the back it comes back down here goes down behind the bar where I've got my insulation. You can see it popping down behind this bar to right here. And that goes on up in this channel on the driver's side up to the front driver's side where it pops out and they leave it bundled with a lot of wire. The other thing you've got is the wire here for the LEDs. And the LEDs come down from that's these halo LEDs that go all the way around the entire camper has them okay which is really amazing nice pre-done lights but that uh, that LED switch is a dimmer that you can turn up and then turn back down and it goes with a uh, oh probably a 55 25 port connection and it goes along with the other wire and runs up here so here's what Tune gives you. Popping out of the front, they give you this wad of wire. Okay? So it's plenty to reach anywhere in the camper, if wherever you want to put your power station. And they terminate the um, fan in this Anderson power pole connection. And they do a great job giving you adapters. They saw that on my power station, in fact, they were going to hook my power station up for me. I had to come out and tell them, no, 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 I'll do all that. I got a DC fuse block I'm going to install. They were hooking everything up and putting new, new adapters on all their wires. So um, they gave me this one just to plug directly into my power station cigar lighter. And then the other wire that comes out, what they do is they have, again, a, uh, I think it's 5525 DC port. And they connect that into this USB-C. And that's for the lights. And let me just make a comment about that. USB-C, hold on. USB-C is a 5-volt uh, supply. All right? So you cannot run 12-volt uh, lights, LED lights, with a dimmer particularly off of 5-volt supply. Without the dimmer, you might get them to light. They might flicker. Um, and, sorry, off of 5 volt supply. They might flicker, but with the dimmer, you have all sorts of problems on under voltage. And so when I plug into this standard USB-C 18 watt, nothing comes on. When I plug into this 100 watt, which is USB-C PD, I think that's power demand. That is a different kind of plug. And what that means is there's a microchip behind that port that this port can change the voltage. And it can go 5 volts, 8 volts, 12 volts. It goes all the way up to 20 volts. The maximum amperage that this that USB-C can flow is 5 amps. If it does 20 volts at 5 amps, then you're 100 watts. But it always defaults to 5 volts. So you don't burn out phones and stuff you plug it into. In order to get it to go to 20 volts, the thing you're plugging in has to have a microchip, a smart chip that tells this port, hey, I don't want 5 watts, I can take 12 watts. And then they do a handshake and this thing's, sorry, I can take 12, 20 watts, whatever. They do a handshake and this thing jumps to the new wattage, but it always flows 5 amps. So it turns out that the dimmer switch that they're using does have the correct micro switch in it a microchip and it will negotiate with a USB-C PD to increase the voltage from 5 watts to 12 and when you do that I'm oh, sorry God, 5 volts to 12 volts and when you do that you're gonna get uh, 5 amps at 12 volts so 60 watts total and these lights will take 75 watts total if you uh, have the correct power supply. 
I think running any 12 volt thing off a USB that starts at 5 volts is just a bad plan. So I don't think they should be powering the uh, particularly lights on a dimmer switch because people are going to plug them in. Most people don't know this. They're going to plug it into the wrong one and they're going to have blinking lights or they won't turn on or it doesn't negotiate good with their power station's chip and they get problems. This ought to be run off a regular 12 volt supply. All right. But for those wondering, the way it comes is a USB PD. And if you have one that says 100 watts, it actually works, but it's not work. It's not 5 volts like this supply is. They're negotiating for 12 volts, and then it works, okay? So I'll turn that on. I'll turn on my DC power on this. This happens to be a Pecron Ugh. E1500. It's got 1536 watts. So I got the DC power station on, and I'll just go over here now and flip this on. And there you go, you can see I'm going to dim it down to off and flip it back on. So you got lots of light in here. All right, so it does work. I hope that explains to people if they're having issues. And if they don't like that, just come on over here to where Toon supplies this plug and plug it in to... Um, power station you might need an adapter this one is actually too too small this is a 55 nope that's not even a standard one so you might need to get an adapter for that um, that uh, will fit all right yeah that is a 55 uh, 25 all right but it's you're not going to have any problems if you just get rid of the USB uh, extension that they give you get the right adapter for your power station hook it on to the end they supply and shove it in okay i want to talk about dc power a little bit more uh that's the blue c uh, dc fuse block i think it goes up to 36 volts and it's got 12 uh, stations on it it can flow i think a hundred uh amps um, and any one circuit can flow 30 amps you're not going to use that much i'm supplying it off a single 30 amp um plug which goes into the ends and comes down here into an xt60 and plugs into my pecron power station right here which is a 12 volt 30 amp <clears throat> supply that's enough to do everything in my camper so here's the things that so far i've found that i want on dc first i've got a uh, D chinese diesel heater this is a vbor and uh, you need to be able to flow 10 amps for that for startup. All right, so I have it on a 15 amp uh, circuit breaker. You round up to protect the wires um, that can flow 10 amp. You round up 100, sorry, 125%, and then you round up for that. So 15 amps. All right, the other one I have is another 15 amp plug going to this extension uh, that goes to USB chargers a voltage voltage meter for my battery setup and a uh, cigar lighter that thing gets anchored up above here in the bed area for me to plug my 12 volt heating blanket in the 12 volt heating blanket i uh, set that up on a 14 awg and if to allow me to run um like a full 10 amps of uh that the cigar lighter can supply uh 10 amp dc and run this thing on high it turns out this only uses uh, 66 watts which at 12 volts is 5 amps okay <clears throat> volts times amps is watts so that plus the usb uh ports on that thing even if i'm uh, charging a ipad or something easily can run on a 14 awg uh wire with a 15 amp fuse protected i could probably do a 10 amp fuse but the wire's fine for 15 amp. All right, so those are the two I got plugged in. The one, other things that come with the camper is uh, lighting, uh, the halo lights on the tune, but your LED lights, that's gonna be a small five amp total draw probably, uh, maybe 60 watts, 70 watts. And then I happen to have a uh, Max Air fan. Most people are gonna have some form of probably a Max Air fan on truck campers if it's decent. It's the best one on the market <clears throat> and that thing only pulls 36 watts power when it's running on high 
Um, and so, you know, only on uh, setting 10, you get 2.9 amps or so. And most of the time it's 0.1 amp, all right? So we're talking um, 0.1 amp times 12. Um, we're only talking uh, one and a half um, watts or so, running that on low, all right? And people have told me that, uh, Phoenix people told me that uh, running it on one or two all the time when you're sleeping is great uh, to just get moisture and have no condensation. And even in the middle of the summer, they're only running it on five or six. And at the five or six setting, um, it's only pulling uh, about one amp, which is 12 watts power. All right, so not very much power at all. So you can run that all night long. So how many circuits is that? One for um, diesel heater, one for USBs or such uh, heating blanket up in the bedding area, one for the max air fan, one for the in, uh, in camper lights. Maybe you're going to run a second LED circuit. I am. I'm going to have red LED lights on each of these gullwing doors. So that's five circuits. You're going to have a sixth circuit for a refrigerator, which needs to pull around uh, 30 to 50 watts usually, so uh, less than five amps. And um, right now, those are all the circuits. Uh, the last one is a um, water pump, if you're going to do that, 12-volt water pump. But I think most people are abandoning the constant on water pumps and just going with the USB battery uh, rechargeable Dometic Go sort of pump that just sits on top and they're just so much easier no wires um, cheap uh, to recharge and all you just charge it it lasts for months so those are all the circuits uh, you could probably get away with a six circuit uh, DC fuse block yeah so that's six that I counted up there um, I got 12 it only cost five dollars more and uh, now I'm ready for any expansion